Okay, the plants are still alive, but I've decided to move on from this DIY watering spike system and build something else. Now, I think I've slightly overwatered the spider plant, so I'm going to maybe add some more soil to that and leave that to try dry out. Um, I've got some things that came in the post. I've got a very random range of things here and this is going to be for the next stage of this watering system but in a previous video i made these bolts which i drilled through these valves and i was having a bit of problem because obviously metal rusts and you can sort of see a little bit on the end of this valve here this aquarium valve and what i've decided to do is to, to start from scratch and make a watering system using the things that are on this table. So I've got some M8 nylon uh, nuts and bolts, some rubber washers. I've also got a load of air stones, which I'm going to use in combination with the bottle, some tubing and some valves to produce a self-regulating watering system. Although, it's not really self-regulating, it's... Well, basically, I have the control over this, and it is regulated based on how much water I put in here and how often I decide to fill the bottles, and the three plants I have in the workshop will obviously need different amounts of water. I've got a few things from a few different places. The bottles are from the supermarket. Um, I bought these on eBay, and this stuff here got sent to me by my contact in Banggood. I tried to draw some M8 ones, but I think it's just really fiddly, so uh, these M10 bolts uh, will be a lot easier to do, and they still fit into the caps of the bottles. So the pilot hole that went through the entire bolt is 3 mil, and now I'm going to drill a 5 mil hole about halfway down which will hold the valve. I'm now drilling the hole in the cap so it's 10 mil. Um, you can always put it in a vise if you don't have a vise grip. Got the nylon bolt, a rubber washer that slips through the hole, and another nylon washer and then finally the nut and it's just a matter of tightening in that up i've got three different type of valves you can see in my hand here these two are from bang goods and this one's from a aquarium supplier on ebay um, i kind of like this one a little bit more because it comes straight down but i just wanted to also show that you can get similar things from other places and this one is at a right angle the nail knob on this is a bit bigger has a nicer grip to it. So the next thing I'm doing is cutting down these planks to use as shelving on a twin slot upright bracket system which I'm just installing to the left hand side of the plant window seat. I'm now making the brackets or a rack to hold the bottles. I'm screwing a piece of 12mm ply 
towards the middle of the shelf this will hold the ends of the bottles up with the nozzles facing downwards into a collar. This is quite self-explanatory so I'm not going to explain what I'm doing. You can just enjoy watching this at slightly higher speed than normal. So the shelf just sits simply like this and the bottles slot in place. So the next thing to do is to connect the water reservoirs to the plants. And the way I'm going to do that is using air stones, surprisingly. So one end goes like this. This is starting to look like something someone would share on Pinterest. Okay, the final thing that I want to do is add this UFO grow light to the area where the plants are going to be kept. Uh, just because there's not enough light coming in through the window and I think this will help them maintain. But just to be safe and in the interest of kind of reviewing this in a way that's as sincere as possible. I'm just going to open it up and double check that the wiring there is safe because it does have a little bit of a rattle to it. <laughs> okay, so a few things have uh, dropped off where they're meant to be. Um, so I'm using brown hot glue, which has a better or a larger range of uh, applications than the white one or clear.
I'm going to put the grow light across a zip cable. This is a theatrical cable. I've got a crimp here and it's literally going to pass through like this to create a loop and then the way I'm going to hold this in place and tighten it is actually a pair of mole grips and that's not going nowhere. On the opposite end I'm just going to use this wire rope grip, D-grip I think they're called, uh, which I'll tighten with a nut spinner and I'll just hold this in place and make sure it's taut on the hooks which I've already put into the wall. I'm going to leave this on for an hour while I go have my lunch and hopefully when I come back it nothing's set on fire or anything like that. It's very noisy but it does have three fans in there and the light is really intense. It's almost hurting my eyes a little bit so I'm making sure that I don't look in that direction at the moment. Anyway, you can put these things on a digital plug timer and have it turn on in the evening or the night when you're not around. Okay, that's been on for about an hour and that has not heated up at all. So that's pretty good, I'm quite happy with that. So clearly the only way to protect the environment is to bring it indoors and hide it behind a blind or curtain. The green corner is now set up in my workshop and it seems to be working okay. I have to confess that this workshop is damp and very cold so these plants do not need a lot of watering and I have to be very careful that I don't accidentally kill them by drowning them. If you'd like to see the list of items that I use for this video, there'll be in a link in the description and uh, also in the article on my website. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you next time.